We don't have any dramatic new viewer releases since last time. Um, all the dramatic stuff is coming soon. Um, so, uh, Veer, how, you want to give us an update on Animesh? Yeah, we're uh, looking at potentially having Animesh go out to a uh, limited, you know, RC release on Agni, uh, possibly as early as next week. Um, the the server part of that is is done, and there's not likely to be any issue. The the only um, the only uncertainty in the timing is really getting a couple of viewer fixes, um, trying to make sure that we front load any viewer changes that potentially change the behavior of Animesh content. Uh, so anyway, that is where we are now. Um, I'm trying to get the final viewer build with my last fixes in, um, and we will see how that goes. So could be as early as next week, may not, we'll see. The uh, shadow thing is not actually part of the Animesh project. Um, that's on Graham's plate, and hopefully we'll get it fixed at some point. But uh, it's not uh, specifically a blocker for Animesh. It's, it's in the backlog of rendering things to be dealt with, but not, not in the same one. Uh, the, uh, the, the current plan is to do that simulator release on the Blue Steel RC channel. Um, you can certainly request that your any any region you are responsible for can be moved to any RC anytime. Uh, that's that's easy. Uh, I don't know what the story with mainland. I think there are some mainland regions in the RCs, it shouldn't be a problem. I should uh, also clarify that the um, viewer is, is still going to be a project viewer. You know, we'll be right. We'll be updating the project viewer whenever the um, simulator goes to Agni or pretty soon in any case, but uh, getting the, you know, remaining issues sorted and getting it out to release is still a squint task. Uh, yes, the, we, we're making progress on moving basically everything to HTTPS. So yes, that's, that's in the pipeline. Um, I don't have any particular timing news. Uh, the web team is pretty busy with some other things and the HTTPS stuff is just a kind of a background activity. Um, so, um, coming soon. I should also have a new voice viewer update sometime the next, before our next before our next meeting. That'll be, you know, a new uh, RC viewer. We're getting an updated SL voice from Vivox. Uh, the region crossing project is continuing. That's, of course, primarily at this point still uh, all server side. Although we're we're porting some of the messaging changes over to the viewer code base, and those those changes will appear in the 
in a in a in a future maintenance branch on the viewer. Um, I don't think that that will have very much effect uh, on on the viewer. We we assume um, that, but it's the same code that duplicated in both places. So, um, and there there is uh, so the. The, the region crossings, we've been making sort of one change at a time, and there will be another batch of those coming out in, in uh, each of the simulator RCs um, uh, over the next, it'll probably be a couple of months before all the changes we, we anticipate making um, have finished working their way through. Um, uh, Let's see, is there an upcoming viewer that reworks texture caching? Yes, there is. Um, but at the moment, that's kind of on hold in favor of the environment enhancements project. Um, we will get back to it soon. Um, and we're, we're optimistic that that's going to make a big difference, or at least a noticeable one. Uh, um, that was not the Love Me Render viewer. It's, it's separate. Um, Uh, the better place to bring a f region border physics question would be uh, either just submit a feature request uh, or a or a bug report on Jira or um, the servers and scripting user group meeting on when is that one? Uh, that's Tuesdays. That's a, a better forum for that particular kind of issue. Uh, which which viewer is a horrible mess in Serial? Oh, the caching one. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, we haven't released it yet. <laughs> it hasn't. It hasn't even had a successful pass through QA yet. So, if it's not working, that's neither surprising nor particularly concerning. Uh, the wiki, you can, you can issue a, you can put in a support ticket for permission to edit on the wiki. And assuming you've got an account in good standing and we don't have reason to believe that you're going to post thousands of ads, uh, that's fine. As far as I know, any Second Life account that has not explicitly been banned from JIRA can do things in Jira right away. Um, so if submitting Jira's isn't a problem, haven't we had some constraints on when people are allowed to like comment on existing Jira? Oh yeah, yes. of spam issues? there right. are restrictions on that, and you can email let me in at lindenlab.com and uh, send other people to do that for Jira commenting. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's. It's unfortunate that we have to have those restrictions, but unf uh, the spammers, if we, we leave we things open. We all know open, why we can't have nice things. Yeah.
yeah, comments you, you have to be enabled for. No, no, please don't tell everyone to email Oz at. That wouldn't be good. Uh, you don't want coffee. Oz to stop reading his email. Uh, yeah, I did get your contribution agreement. Thank you very much, Coffee. That's really wonderful. Looking forward to using it. Uh, let's see, storm 2118. Let me look at that one. Improvements to the unified. Uh, didn't we, didn't we already merge some of this? Mm, Neuron might be right. We may have merged it into the snapshot viewer. Denial. Oh, oh, yeah, that might be true. Uh, yeah, I'll have to, I, I will mark that for follow-up and. Pantera knows how that is when your changes accidentally get stuck in a viewer that slowed down. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I still get pings of uh, guilt about this Tuesday. Okay. Um, I'm going to change the assignee on that issue so that we get it reviewed uh, re again. Thank you for bringing that back to my attention. Yeah, we do. We do want to try and get the the uh, 360 viewer going again. It's it's stuck behind other things, waiting for resources. So, uh, but we're not going to forget about it. We like it. We can take better pictures of this meeting in the round. Yeah, maybe maybe we can even just merge that separately. Two one four seven. Yeah, the, the projector thing, we're still a little bit stuck on defining what the behavior should be. Uh, Kitty, the, the, uh, 
there are there are two completely independent control variables on an experience. One controls whether or not it is available grid wide, which is the feature we will be introducing later this year. We we think, um, and the other is whether or not you're automatically enrolled in the experience, which is something only Linden created experiences can do, and which we do not plan to release to uh, to resident created experiences. So. Uh, and even we don't use them much. Um, the uh, so the so it the fact that something is grid wide does not mean that you're automatically consenting to it. You still have to explicitly accept the you know enable the experience. It's just that the landowner doesn't have to have explicitly added it to the land before you can even be prompted. Yes, gate, uh, some of the gateway regions, uh, the, uh, our gateway regions use use what. That's also slightly different. Basically, we we can pre-enroll. Uh, it's possible for us to define that if you come in through gateway X, then you are automatically enrolled in the experience that you land in when you when you come in that way. Um, it's a it, it enables us to do things like custom tutorials. Um, and that sort of thing. Right. Still want to know whether a prim is part of an experience. Well, technically it's a script that's part of an experience, but okay. Uh, All right, I'll, I'll be watching for that, Kitty. That's we 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 definitely want experiences to be a a transparent thing. You should be able to tell whether and control whether an experience is able to influence you and and. Okay. We we should probably provide a way to put a beacon on whatever it is that's that you're querying about. I don't I, I don't object to exposing UUIDs necessarily, but they're not a very friendly user interface. So um, I'd prefer to find a friendlier way to guide people to things if we can. Yeah, highlighting, beaconing, all those things. Uh, improved wording is is uh, most welcome. We'll see what we can do.
uh, you know, it's a, it's kind of a tricky balance trying to find something that lets people know what they're consenting to and yet doesn't scare them. It's, I'm, I'm prepared to believe that we went, you know, a little too far on the scary direction initially. How come people are scared of allowing experiences but aren't scared of allowing debit permissions? Yeah. So is everybody looking forward to the SL15B next week? Yay. Uh, read offline messages cap. Yes, we are working on it. Uh, it turned out that there were a couple of problems with friend requests and group, uh, permissions requests, and we're fixing those. As soon as those are done, then the read offline messages will be, will be all finished. So that's, it's coming. Um, I think that will, the fixes for the server side will be in QA next week, and hopefully we'll roll them out fairly quickly after that. Uh, could there be some policy? Uh, Kitty, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand exactly the sequence of events you're describing. It, it shouldn't be possible for an experience to be used by everyone on the grid. So maybe, maybe a longer description of.
I'm I'm not familiar with that. It it should not be possible to create a an experience script that's public. So please file a Jira with the details so that I understand what what you're referring to because I don't. Oh, I think I see. Hmm. Uh, it definitely does not sound like it was what the intent behind it was. So. Uh, a detailed, a detailed bug report would be appreciated. Although it sounds like we might annoy a lot of people if we changed it at this point. We'll have to look at that. I think this definitely falls into the learn something new every day category. Thing for today. Yeah. Can I unlearn this one? <laughs> <laughs> that unfortunately is not one of the alternatives. We had talked about the um, about this uh, kind of more extensive. Uh, Permission e system thing a few months back, uh, as you, you might recall, that uh, is is partly to address these kinds of security concerns around uh, link listeners and so forth. Right.
I think the request that started off was willing to be able to um, have sort of permission to do linking and unlinking without having to have sort of full permissions to do anything. I guess I get it.
the discoverability of the viewer of UI is not necessarily everything you would want it to be. But then again, if we made everything be pop-ups and visible all the time, that's all you'd be able to see. It's a, it's a balancing act. Besides our experiences that people don't read the pop-ups, they just push the OK buttons. I sometimes am looking through um, some set of changes where I actually need to read the pop-up because um, it's a thing that I'm supposed to consider. Um, and I will just automatically click the button before I got a chance to read it. Never mind you, Liz, who, who reads, you know, debit permissions warnings. Any other topics? Yeah, we're going to try to get started on the the posing feature uh, I sent you an in meeting invite Naran for a, a review meeting for next week. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we use the Google Meeting thing all the time, but uh, if you want to try it out with me before then, I can I can set that up. If you're if you're running Chrome, it it um, it'll probably just work. Uh, Veer, you were talking about the off by 90. Yeah, I don't think that earlier. Graham is currently working on that. Um, is, we, we've discussed this by email a bit before. Um, there's there, there, there's various uh, kind of related issues. It's it's not just a kind of a need to fix one thing, but uh, it is on the list of stuff we want to look at, um, you know, hopefully before we get out to release with the NMS viewer.
Uh, if they're static, they shouldn't be animesh. <laughs> Yeah, I see what you mean. It seems like overkill. Anything else we should touch on before we wrap up? Okay, well, thanks for coming, everybody, and we'll see you in two weeks. What Oz means is next week at SL15B. Well, that too, yes. Yeah, well, we're trying to address as many options for misuse as we can think of, but uh, I'm, I'm sure like every other we method of content up. creation that comes out, uh, people are going to find opportunities. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think an Animesh windmill is, is going to have really horrible performance implications. You know, we try to account for the overhead of having the skeleton around, but uh, I guess we'll see once people try it.
Why animesh doors? Like, why? Why would did, did someone already do this? <laughs> That's a good one, Beck. I mean, you do have a minimum of fifteen land impact for a uh, for an animesh object now, so I can't believe people are going to go completely nuts on things like doors. Unless it's their region, I guess. Dancing doors, yep. So you can have a skeleton in your closet and a skeleton in the door to the closet? If we do wind up with a whole lot of objects that have, you know, kind of minimal skeletons that are only using a few bones, um, we can probably optimize the unused ones away without too much work. Well, we do still have the limit of one animesh attachment, so I guess people can't go too berserk with their, you know, they can't have eyebrows and beards at the same time or whatever. All right, I'll look forward to uh, nail growing animus and uh, bye. Yeah, I should run, but uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing how it goes. Well.